Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're in the chart house of Red Oak Victory, a Victory ship that is open as a museum ship here in Richmond, California, and in the process of being restored to sailing condition. So, one of the coolest things we saw on the tour was this map of Ulithi Atoll. We'll have a link in the description below. You can, you can look at this uh, on your own computer. It's available online. But uh, they, they've got it blown up so you can actually see it really well here and where all of the major berths are. You guys have no doubt seen that picture of Murderer's Row, all the Essex-class fleet carriers moored in Ulithi Atoll in 1944. Well, you can see these uh, big berths right up here at the main channel. That picture was taken up this. This, this was Murderer's Row right here. So, uh, one of the major takeaways from this map is just the sheer concentration of vessels that the United States put in Ulithi Atoll. Look at how many berths there are here. Notice that they're circular, so the ship would anchor more or less in the center, and depending on what the wind and the tides were doing, it would swing that ship at anchor. So they've got a certain amount of space between each berth uh, so the ships don't run into each other. Uh, also, you can see that the berths are different sizes, and obviously uh, larger ships can only go in the larger berths, or they'll swing outside of their uh, assigned mooring area and take out the ships around them, or force those mooring areas to be left empty, preventing the full fleet from being an anchor there. Famously, Battleship New Jersey was in this formation somewhere around uh, here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on Christmas Eve 1944, and that is when a rogue friendly, as if friendly fire is a real thing, uh, friendly fire isn't, but a rogue uh, five-inch shell fired from a friendly ship crashed through her fantail deck. So you can see with this concentration of ships just how dangerous that is. It is likely to hit something. Uh, but in today's video, we were reading some of the recollections of Signalman Second Class Bob Tachara, who served on board Red Oak Victory during World War II and uh, was on board Red Oak Victory here at Ulithi Atoll when the ship was unloading 14-inch ammunition onto the battleship New York, sister ship of USS Texas, which has also been preserved as a museum ship. And uh, we found a very interesting passage by him. As a signalman, he served up here on the bridge. And because cleanliness is important on ships, one of the things that uh, he was tasked with doing every single day was to swab the decks of the bridge. So uh, he would just tie a line around the handle of a swab, a mop, throw it over the bridge wing uh, so that it dunked in the salt water, and then haul it up and swab the decks. And that cleaned the decks of the space. And it meant that he didn't have to run down to the nearest head to get a mop bucket and bleach and whatever else and come up here and mop the decks. Well, an order goes out saying that uh, you cannot do that anymore because it puts the crew at risk for dysentery. It's the 20th century. What are we doing still catching dysentery? Like the only people who've caught dysentery lately are people who played the video game Oregon Trail. Like, that just doesn't happen anymore. Well, look at this concentration of ships. Imagine the concentration of humans on each one of these ships. Battleship New Jersey is designed to have 2,000 sailors on board, and she has 2,700 at this time. Red Oak Victory was designed to have a crew of about 50 merchant mariners on board, but about 104 uh, sailors were on board when the ship was in naval service. So you can see how the crews of each of these ships balloons in size, and, and that is something that is consistent through every one of the ships here, from the smallest ammunition ship up to the largest battleship or aircraft carrier. So you're putting a tremendous number of bodies into really confined spaces, and then you've got times when all of these ships are in anchorage in the same place. Nowadays, ships would pump all of their sanitary holdings into a tank and hold it there until they go out into international waters where it is relatively safe to dump it into the ocean. In a restricted anchorage like Ulithi that is more or less surrounded by reefs and atolls, that sort of waste is not being moved away by the tides quickly. 
And when you've got, look at how many births here. I, I'm seeing uh, 377 births for slips for ships here in uh, Ulithi. So imagine that many ships. And during World War II, they do not yet have significant holding tanks. They're just dumping everything into the ocean. So that's all in this lagoon. So if you take your mop, throw it off the bridge wing, you might not just be getting seawater back up. So now you're spreading disease instead of cleanliness. So the Navy does a tremendous number of things to try and promote cleanliness on their ships. Uh, not just something as, as uh, simple as putting out a directive, stop washing your swabs in the ocean water, make sure you're getting it through the evaporators, but also um, they have things to promote ventilation on board. Remember, a lot of bodies, South Pacific, very hot and sweaty. Your evaporators are only making a certain amount of water per day. That water first goes into the boilers so you can continue to operate the ship. Anything that's left over goes into drinking. And then finally, if you've still got some left over at the end of that, you might be able to shower. So uh, without adequate facilities for everybody to take what the Navy calls Hollywood showers, or the kind of shower you take at home, cleanliness isn't as big as it could be because of that. So things like ventilation, uh, portholes are able to be opened when you're in port and there are scoops that can go on that to help direct airflow in. And that also ventilates a lot of that miasma back out. Merchant Marine ships also have fans about twice the size of Navy ships. And that's something that blew me out of the water, uh, seeing them both on Jeremiah O'Brien and now on Red Oak Victory, two completely different classes of World War II era merchant ships. It is the same sort of fan that Iowa class battleships had during World War II, but it is physically twice as big, moving as much air. So uh, this sort of concentration led to health problems that I never thought about before. What are some other problems like that that uh, I think other viewers might not have thought about? Let us know in the comments section down below. Maybe we'll make a video about that in the future. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. For today's video, consider supporting Red Oak Victory in Richmond, California, so that they can continue to work towards getting the ship operating again and prevent their staff from getting dysentery. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us in our museum. Thanks for watching.